what's up guys it's Paul uh, some of you may know me by my live stream channel on uh, twitch.tv slash is my strength zero some of you may be new to my channel so let me begin for those that don't know me by saying that I'm an old school RuneScape streamer uh, who's pretty well known for you know basically being very successful with merching amongst all the other content that I push out on my channel uh, but due to the ridiculous amount of requests that I've had on my live stream channel for this guide I've decided to go ahead and make it and go ahead and pursue a full series on it uh, where in this video specifically I'm going to start with just the basics of merching uh, and explain my personal approach and my methods um, but then as we progress you know I'll get very in depth into the, the different branches of merching uh, on old school RuneScape. Now this is not a money making guide I want to stress that uh, the purpose of this guide is to explain the tactics that I use when merching uh, and I'll detail the different types of merching what categories of items to target for each merching uh, I guess type discuss what I call hype items and explain what factors I consider personally when deciding what items to flip what items to invest in etc the guide will be the first in the series as I said and uh, I, I'm really gonna dive in pretty deep in the future but I want this to be basically a broad overview of merching um, from someone that hasn't done it before and wants to dip their hands into it so I don't want to you know target one specific group by saying all right, this is what you're going to do to start merching, or this is what you're going to do if you have over 100 mil. I'd rather this first video in the series be something that everyone can apply to what they do if they're going to get into it. Uh, so let me caveat by saying that there's much more to know about merching than I can explain in this specific guide. Uh, so if you, you know, I'll probably see comments like, oh, well, you forgot about this, um, or you didn't mention this, and you could do this better. This is just, um, you know, all of that's going to be covered in my future merch guides, but I have to limit the information in this one to keep it a decent length. Uh, so you know, bear with me there. Uh, but let's begin with the basics, uh, the different types of merching. And I'm basically just going to categorize this into three separate topics. Uh, topic number one, flipping. Number two, bulk flipping. A little bit different. And number three, investing. We're going to stick to those three for this video. Uh, we'll get into some other styles uh, in the future. But these are all very simple and well-known concepts, uh, so I'm not going to get a, I'm not going to spend a lot of time explaining them. But I'll give a broad overview real quick uh, for those that don't know what you know one of them may be. Uh, but for each of these, you need to find out what works best for you if you're going to get into merching. So, you know, I do very well flipping, and I do very well investing. I'm not as good of a bulk flipper, but some people are absolutely amazing merching bulks. All right, guys. So let's start out with flipping. Flipping consists of buying an item and selling it for profit. It is the most basic form of merching, though in my experiences it's also the most rewarding if you know how to do it correctly. For this style of merching, you maximize your profit by moving items quickly and adjusting your profit margin successfully. You should flip if you think you can find an item that you can move a decent amount of in a short amount of time for a reasonable profit margin. If you've seen my videos or live streams before, you know my personal favorite items to flip are third age pieces due to their high profit margin. Uh, for most players, this won't be attainable until they build up their bank. So in this clip, I'm just demonstrating a quick Abyssal Whip flips for a small profit margin. For flipping, I want to cover several key points. Profit margins, item selection, and location. Here I was doing a profit margin of 50,000 GP. What that means, is, for those that don't understand profit margins, is I'm buying Abyssal Whips for 1.6 mil and selling it for 50k over that 1.65 mil. I do this to limit the market to myself by being the most desirable offer on both sides of the deal, the buy and the sell. Item selection is arguably the most important factor when determining how much profit per hour you can manage while flipping. When choosing an item to flip, I consider the following. Number one, how desirable is this item? For a quick flip, you want an item that is both abundant and has a high demand. This mainly applies to cheaper items such as Abyssal Whips, whereas, whereas Slow Flips refers to more expensive items that do not move as quickly but net a larger profit margin to make up for it. Number two, what profit margin can you achieve? When determining this, you want to calculate how much profit per hour you can gain. For instance, in the six minutes that it took me to make this clip, I was able to buy and sell three whips at a profit margin of 50,000 GP. I then take the 6 minute test that I used and multiply the variables by 10 to determine my estimated profit over 60 minutes. So 3 whips at 50k profit each in 6 minutes comes out to 1.5 million GP per hour gained. 
Now it's obviously hard to say that's a solid figure when I only tested this item for six minutes, uh, and it was during a peak hour of the day, but I just wanted to explain briefly how to calculate the profit per hour. In the past when I've flipped whips at 50 to 100k profit margins, I've averaged about 800k to 1 mil profit per hour. Now if you take a look around my character, you'll see the other side of the story. Uh, people around me are selling whips for 1670 and 1680k each. Uh, there was one other person that was selling for 1.65 mil each at the time, so that's what I decided to set my sell price to. On the other side of that, 1.6 mil was the most common buy price, but no one was really paying more than that. Now by doing this, I make myself the most marketable person in this area, and therefore I'm able to get more whip trades than most of the people around me to maximize my profit per hour. And the last part to this is number three. Can I get a large supply of the items that I'm looking for at once so I can focus all of my time towards selling the item rather than half buying and half selling? Now this applies more towards bulk flips, so I'm going to discuss this in the next section. I'm going to provide a list of a few commonly flipped items in this area with estimated profit margins to get an idea of what markets to dip, dip into if you're interested. Keep in mind that those with larger margins trade much slower than the others, so they're not necessarily better in terms of profit per hour. Remember that profit margins change often and may not be accurate when you're watching this video. Now the last bit of information here is location, and it's really not that important. Uh, to hit on in detail, but basically I just want to mention that you need to be trading things at the right areas. So you don't want to be trading god swords in the area for whips. And I see people do it all the time, so I just want to mention it. Now our next topic is bulk flipping. It follows the same guidelines as flipping, with a slightly different twist. I don't need to hit this as hard since the same concepts apply the only difference here is, instead of focusing on single items such as god swords or bandos armor, your market is geared towards larger quantities that can still be bought and sold quickly, often at the same time. To pick up where I left off in the last section, when bulk flipping, you want items that can either buy or sell a large quantity of in one go if you want to optimize your time. Bulk flipping is manageable when playing both the buying and selling games evenly, but in my opinion only pays off when you can cut one of the two out of the mix by buying all or selling all at one time to one person. If you're talking on a steady basis, this really can only be taken advantage of to its full potential if you have a steady and reliable supplier. Though I've personally had my runs in the past where I've made a ton of money bulk flipping cannonballs or chins or similar items due to limited competition, uh, which enabled me to set a higher profit margin for my flips, uh, so I'm not saying that it's impossible to be very successful at it's just not as practical as other forms of merching. Here are a list of few commonly flipped bulks. Now unfortunately I can't provide you with profit margins on these because they change for bulk so often. Uh, just keep in mind that it's really easy to figure it out if you just go sit in the market for a few minutes and see what is being bought and sold at regularly. Uh, remember that profit margins on bulks aren't as large and you're usually only going to range between 10 and 50 GP per item depending on what it is. Now investing is the trickiest of these three mentioned. Investing focuses on a numerous amount of indicators to predict an item's past, present, and future trends. When using this method, the merchant buys one or multiple items when he believes they are at their cheapest price or will soon take a sharp rise regardless of the current price, and sells for an extreme profit. It's easy to guess which item will rise and try to invest in it. Anyone can do that. Uh, but what I'd like to teach you to do is to make an educated, informed decision based on different indicators. These are some of, but not all of the pieces of information that I consider when analyzing potential investments. I'll go into this in more detail in future videos, as there are multiple factors that come to mind just at a glance, but I'll cover the most important ones that I feel need to be stressed in this video. These are going to include future updates, uh, which can be broken down into polls, dev vlogs, etc., uh, market trends, price crashes, and shifts in related items. Future updates are probably my favorite indicator for long-term investments. I consider several key sources when analyzing future updates. These consist of developers' blogs, content polls, official Jagex live streams, and even social media. Uh, the dev blogs and content polls are probably the strongest indicators in my eyes because they're the earliest bits of information of guaranteed proposed content to the game. By this, I mean content that has been approved for, the, uh, for community consideration, but not yet confirmed added to the game. When future updates are still in this stage, items to be affected are still at a manageable price to invest in. 
Basically, investing at this stage of a proposed update will serve to beat the hype, uh, which is pretty important when you're looking at a long-term investment. You want to get to an item before other people get to it. Uh, the Zambia Spear is shown I invested in once they drop to about seven to 800k. I did this well before any dev blog or content poll, but began when Jagex started hinting at possible content polls in official live streams by Matt K. For this item, I considered the utility of the item, or lack thereof, I guess, uh, meaning how it was released and basically good for no practical situation in the game. At first hint from Matt K that Spears might be pulled at some point to increase its usefulness, I began buying and set a small amount to the side, and I just went with 30. I was going to go with more, but I wanted to keep this one limited because I wasn't too sure of it. If I was very intent on this in investment, I would have increased my collection right as the word came out that they would be pulled to become one-handed items. Uh, however, due to other distractions in the game, I didn't take advantage of this key piece of information, but I should have. Uh, I mentioned it just to show you that you can use multiple indicators at different stages of an investment to fully take advantage of it and set yourself up for success. The last bit is social media and honestly isn't as big of an indicator as most. Um, this would include Jagex's official Twitter feeds, YouTube channel, and even Facebook page in hopes that they'd release some information there first before it's spread out to the rest of the community, uh, which has happened in the past and I used uh, that to my advantage, reference the rare item drops over the summer in 07 scape. All of these factors should be considered when determining what to invest in and how much to invest. In future videos, I'll explain the other side of the story, how to get rid of potential investments safely and efficiently for maximum profit, without losing potential profits due to competition. Price crashes are another factor that I'd like to take advantage of, but it's probably more risky than the rest of the bunch. When doing this, you determine where the lowest point of a price crash would be and invest in it before the price begins to creep back up. When investing off a price crash, you typically need to hold on to an item for two to three months to make any sort of sizable profit from it, and you do risk that the price maintains at the low end of the crash, unfortunately. And though this seems a little scary to invest in from what I just said, if done correctly and on the right item, you can actually make a ton of profit off of this. The last indicator I'd like to discuss is shifts in related items. This is a much more difficult aspect to predict, so I'm not really going to go into it in too much detail, but I'll at least explain it so you know what to look for if you'd like to try it out. The best example I can think of to use here would be cannonballs. When determining if you want to invest in an item like cannonballs, you should look for items related to it to see how they're performing. In this case, you'd look at the root of the item, so steel bars. If you notice a significant rise in steel bars, but have yet to notice the same in cannonballs, they may be a solid investment opportunity. This can also be said for uh, potions, raw and cooked food, etc. Uh, when the demand for one side goes up, the other has to follow. This pretty much covers it for my first installation of this merch series. Again, the purpose of this was not to serve as a money-making guide, but to detail the basic principles of merching and hint on how to apply them. Some of the content to look forward to in this series will include merching at different bank values, for example, what's merch third age items, how to dump items during a crash without a huge loss, and quick hints at items with huge investment potential. I hope you guys enjoyed the information provided. Please sub, like, and leave a comment if you found the video helpful and would like me to continue the series.